Welcome and thanks for coming. Um, thanks for coming to Auric for our reverse demo. Um, so um, those of you who know a little bit about Auric may know that we represent a lot of technology companies and investors in technology companies and we like to put, put on events like this. Uh, where we can hopefully uh, connect people within the entrepreneurial and investing community and maybe <clears throat> shed some insight on the whole process that uh, people go through. So tonight we're trying to turn the tables on the VCs who listen to a lot of pitches and force them uh, to do their own pitching um, and to explain to people why their particular institution uh, is the right one for their startup to take money from. Um, it, the format is going to be five minute pitches. Uh, we've got a number of great uh, VCs, real luminaries, uh, so we're very proud to have them associated with it. Also, I would be remiss if I didn't mention tomorrow we're having uh, another one of these programs. We're going to have a panel discussion about the current, um, <clears throat> the current state of the market in M&A uh, and IPOs. Uh, and then Thursday, uh, we're going to be having um, an evening presentation, uh, panel discussion of big data and fashion. So, uh, wonderful turnout tonight. Would uh, love to see some of you at uh, one or both of those if you can make it. So, part of tonight's uh, <clears throat> proceedings uh, will involve the judging of our VCs, who are going to be judged based on relevant criteria, which I think are going to be uh, clarity, con conciseness, um, smack talking, and uh, you know other other so fun humorous. Content? As much yeah, humor as we Competence, can. perhaps. <laughs> Catherine, you're, just being, you're being very didactic. Very <laughs> so, uh, Catherine Minshew uh, is, is a well-known, uh, very successful uh, entrepreneur here in, in New York, uh, a Y Combinator alum, uh, and the CEO of the Muse. Uh, she seat, so she's one of our judges tonight, seated next to Jesse Middleton, uh, who manages WeWork Labs, uh, a very successful co-working space in the United States. And, many geographies within the United States. So, uh, Jesse and Catherine, thank you very much uh, for agreeing to moderate tonight. Um, later on, after we've had each of our <clears throat> panelists do their presentations, we'll open it up for some questions. Um, so please don't heckle the VCs and give them questions uh, before they're done. So the first of our participants, and thank you for agreeing to go first, is John Frankel. John's uh, a longtime venture capitalist here in New York uh, with FF Ventures. John. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Now, just before I start, um, uh, Kathleen from Comcast Ventures, when she comes up, it's her birthday today, so when she, when she comes in, I want a big round of applause and cheering standing up when she comes in. Um, now, I, I have to apologize because I have a conflict, so I get to lead off, um, but I won't be here for the uh, Q&A session. Um, let me tell you a little bit about FF Venture Capital. We're an early stage fund, so we invest in the angel rounds. We constrain the size of our fund so that we can write meaningful checks and lead angel rounds. What's unusual about us for our size of fund is you would normally expect there to be about three, maybe four employees in a $50 million uh, fund. We have 20 employees. We provide a ton of services to help our portfolio companies succeed. Um, oh, actually, let me, we're going to do this in different order. Um, we provide a ton of services to help our companies succeed. Uh, we look for companies that we think are going to change the behavior of millions of people. So when we invest in companies like Clout or 500px, Indiegogo, Lightfire, they're angel rounds, two to three million dollar valuations, relatively small rounds. They were unknown brands. I think most people in the room, you know, uh, have become a little bit anxious about the cloud school. Maybe they crowdfunded something on Indiegogo. Uh, if they're a photographer, uh, maybe they put some pictures up, some kudos on 500 PX. We have 44 active portfolio companies, about 40% in New York about 25% uh, on the West Coast. We invest in enterprise, consumer, hardware, software, social, antisocial. Um, we, we invest across the board. Um, the, we are great believers in happenstance. Uh, the best way to get to know us is through anyone we've invested in. If you know one of our CEOs, 
talk to them about us and understand what we do and how we help them. Um, a lot of our deal flow comes through warm intros, but we believe in happenstance. We invest in Adcade, uh, Rob Cromer, who isn't in the room. I think he accosted me in a men's um, bathroom uh, at first, uh, at first time. Uh, we invest in a company off of Shark Tank. So we're kind of a little crazy, a little out there. We're also the um, uh, only VC firm in the country uh, to have um, uh, opened up our returns to the public. Uh, so we are out there with a 10 year track record of over 30% gross internal rate of returns. And given that we take our management fees and recycle them into services for our portfolio companies, those returns are a testament to how the companies we've invested in have grown, and hopefully the services we've provided have helped them grow. Um, as you can see, smaller funds have better returns. Uh, smaller funds are a great place um, to get capital from because we're not sort of buying options from small companies. We really care about the companies we invest in and the returns they can generate. Um, a little bit on our uh, approach, I think I've touched uh, on most of this. We have an office in New York and New Jersey. Um, we carry both passports. Um, and we're generalists. Uh, so we really don't pick the team du jour. We look for a great team, looking to change the behavior of millions of people, then look to back them, and we're incredibly, incredibly patient. And uh, I think that's all of my slides. Uh, how are we doing for time? 58 seconds. Sorry? 58 seconds. 58 seconds left. Good. Okay. Um, I, Do you have any musical talent? Do <laughs> <laughs> you want me to clear this room? Because <laughs> that's what my musical talent would do. Um, no, I think that's pretty much it. So I want to thank you for listening to uh, our story. Um, and again, look after Kathleen when she comes out. Thank you. Is this on? Um, okay, John, thank you so much. Um, our next is going to be Spencer Lazar uh, from General, General Catalyst. Uh, I think that's the line on there. Hey, guys. Uh, just queue up the presentation. All right, really nice to be here. Um, I have not done a tremendous amount of this on behalf of GC because we just officially opened up shop here, I guess about six months ago. So 18 portfolio companies here though, we've had, we've had a presence in the city for a long time, but no people full time for an extended period. And it's an absolute pleasure to be here. This is the city that I want to spend my life in. And so it's a complete pleasure to get to do that in this ecosystem. So, um, We've invested in tons of companies you know, some of them in New York, Hunch, Group Me, uh, a bunch of consumer companies, as well as a bunch of infrastructure and enterprise companies like Tremor Video and Jitsu and more. But who are we? And I think with any of the funds that you're going to hear from tonight, John's fund as well, um, you know, it's really important to start with we're people. Um, I know some of you in the audience, um, you know, we have different, uh, you know, personal interests outside of work. We have different experiences. We're different ages, all sorts of stuff come from different countries, and uh, I encourage you, no matter what person you hear from individually today, to spend time trying to investigate the background of the firms um, at an individual person level. Um, we have people that uh, have worked in the industry, we have consultants, former military uh, officers, um, people that went to small colleges, fancy colleges, um, grew up abroad, you know, and so there's probably someone like you at our firm right now, lawyers, doctors, all that stuff. Um, and again, I think I really encourage you to focus on this as you think about potential capital partners. Um, we're also family, um, and I think if you uh, know anyone at GC, you know any of our companies, um, we are, have a really, really collaborative culture, and it's really one of the only ways that you can make an, a national venture capital practice work. Um, it, it takes a ton of work. I've seen it internationally. I used to work at Excel um, in their European and Israeli office. 
um, work at Insight, which is all in New York, and I can tell you the more offices, the more effort it takes on the venture on behalf of the venture capital firm, but it really pays off. Um, these are some of the companies that we've, we've had the privilege of working with. Um, the reason why we do that is because we believe that venture capital is a local business, and uh, I am not long on funds that have investments in geographies, uh, or not short on funds that have uh, investments in geographies outside of their city, but I can tell you that to know the needs of your business is to be in the midst of your businesses, and this is something we take very seriously, and with 18 companies in New York, it's a big reason why I moved here uh, to do this for GC. Um, we also believe that uh, to be where the most ambitious entrepreneurs are, you have to be where they are geographically as well. So we are in New York, um, as is obvious. Our flagship office originally was in uh, Cambridge, and we're also in uh, Silicon Valley. So our practice right now is about 50% Cambridge, 45% uh, the Valley, and now I'm the first person on the ground here, and we're, we're building rapidly from there. We like to get involved early, and I think this is a really important distinction from what John mentioned. Um, he is a, an exclusively angel slash seed focused investor, and, and a good one at that. Um, we do a bunch of seed. We do something which is called hatching, um, which is where we incubate companies internally. Um, it's not all we do, so we're not really a traditional studio, as you might think of, like the obvious company or something like that. Um, but we identify spaces that we're really long on. We think we can make a five, ten year macro bet on. And we actually pull teams together and try to um, bring companies into the world. So we did that with companies like Kayak. We did that with Demandware. Um, these are not small companies now. These are multi-billion dollar companies um, that were started in our office. Um, and there are probably a dozen with enterprise value north of $100 million. We also get involved late. So we have a, a growth practice where we actually buy businesses. Um, and that's unlike uh, some of the, the firms you'll hear from today, um, and that is a completely different strategy. We partner with former entrepreneurs. Um, we, you know, they usually take either an executive chairman or CEO role. Um, maybe less relevant to this room today, but it's a very important part of what we do. And uh, if you're interested in later stage venture capital or sort of venture buyouts, I'm happy to talk to you about that. As I mentioned, we're big believers in the city here, and uh, again, I think there's no better way to say that than voting with your feet. Um, you know, we, we just set up our office in Soho. Um, we've got about five people in the office now, um, a lot doing a lot of work in industries that are endemic to indigenous to New York, um, specifically financial services, e-commerce, media, ad tech, and stuff like that. And we're digging in deep. Great. Yeah, I'll, give you, I'll give you 15 seconds That's to wrap up. <laughs> but this is indeed how we view you as entrepreneurs. You are X-Men, and we want to get to know all of your superpowers. So. <laughs>
Um, so we're trying to bring not just more women into angel investing, but more men in our area, and um, we're sourcing deal flow from all over the country. Um, we hunt for deal flow. We go to 500 startups, ERA, DreamIt, YC. We use AngelList and we use Gust. Um, we look at a variety of industries. Um, CSA Trading is a cocoa company. Lane Honey is a logistics company. Simply Grid is um, an electrical solution, and the list goes on. Um, why would you work with Topstone? We're a newer group. We may not be the biggest group. Maybe we haven't done the most deals, but we get it. We have an entrepreneurial spirit. We have expertise in a variety of industries from our membership. We're getting our deals done, and we have the capacity to connect to other investors in the industry and other industry experts. So just to prove it, I've put together a few slides for you to show how we know what it's like to be a startup or an entrepreneur. So you might start out looking fresh and good. You put your team together, you develop a strategy, you do the work, some days are like this, and maybe your team looks like this. There's setbacks. And everyone says there's no crying in this business, but there is. You pick up your bat and you take another swing. You tell your team and yourself, I'll make it. You go back and you do more work. Oh, and then there's the investors. Whatever it takes to get it done, your little superstitions, um, getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning to go to work, working on your slides through the night, we know that. Do even more work, and then one day you wake up and like a miracle, it works. It's all come together. Your round is closed, your product is performing, it's out of beta, um, and you're smiling, and it all looks good, and you feel like this guy again. So, that's why you should work with Topstone, because we get it, and we're entrepreneurial in spirit. Again, we have a lot of expertise in our group, we're getting deals done, and we will work with you to fill out your round and try to connect you to other investors. So Topstone, we invest more than just money. Thank you, Kristen. Um, okay, next we have Weston Gaddy. Uh, from Bain Capital Partners. Mm. Got to follow him. <laughs> you guys are great for coming out here. I was standing downstairs before, having a water, and an entrepreneur came up to me and said, what are you pitching? I looked at him and I said, mm. I'm not really sure. I think my firm, he said, well, is it in... You know, is it a mobile idea? Is it, is it an e-commerce idea? And I thought, one of us is going to have a really bad time tonight. Because it's either going to be me, because I'm pitching the totally wrong thing, or it's going to be you, because you're going to be really bored, because you're thinking you're hearing about great ideas, and you're really just hearing about VCs. Tell us about your mobile idea. It's a great app. Is it social? Local? It's all three at once. Uh, my presentation's not here, but that's okay. Um, so, Bain Ventures. Let me tell you guys, uh, I'll give you a quick version of a long history. Bain Capital has been in the news a lot. Um, some of it good, some of it bad, but all of it Mitt Romney. Um, so, what, you know, the, the long history is, Bain actually started off in the mid-1980s making venture investments. And most people don't know that about us, because now we're known for these big buyouts of Toys R Us and Dunkin' Donuts and HCA, Clear Channel, Weather Channel, 50 other companies that are all over a billion dollars in sales. But what most people don't know is our first investment was actually a Series A in Staples. And that sort of foundational principle of invest in big markets and invest in great teams is still the way that we look at the world today. So even though from the mid-1980s to about 2000, we had one fund that went from $3 million Series A up to $3 billion buyout. We had that same foundational principle. But eventually, it gets pretty challenging to make a $3 million investment and a $3 billion investment out of the same fund. So Bain Capital Ventures was essentially started as the growth and, private, the growth and venture capital arm of Bain Capital. So now, the way that we look at businesses is the same but the way that we invest is a little bit different. So the way that we look at the world is, we've got all these great companies inside of our buyout group that represent over $50 billion in revenue, billions of dollars in ad spend, billions of dollars in technology spend. 
And the question is, can we find small technologies, small companies that are trying to sell into that group in some capacity, and we can play matchmaker? So we can invest in companies, we can take the same operational approach, this team-based approach that we've had for 20 years, and make connections and help those companies to grow. So there's a few different ways that we do that. You know, every, every firm is gonna tell you, we give you three things, we give you support, we give you a network, we give you capital, but the flavors of that in, that you hear in all these presenters tonight are gonna be very different. So for us, it's, that network is 300 investors, 10 offices around the globe, $80 billion in total investments across all of our different funds. And that's a big network. You know, that's, that's over 150,000 people that work inside of all the Bain Capital companies. So that network is pretty broad, it's pretty expansive, and it's pretty powerful for our companies. The second thing is support, and again, comes in a bunch of different flavors. For us, it's pretty specific. We have 35 people for a $600 million fund, and that Quick math, like, like John had mentioned, is what we believe drives our ability to be helpful to companies. It's not good intentions, it's really hours in a day, it's number of hours you can spend on each one of your portfolio companies. So we have a lot of people who get very operationally involved with our companies, and we believe that, that makes, that's what makes the difference at the end of the day of being a value-added investor versus money. And then capital. That really is the commodity. At the end of the day, more money can always be found for great ideas. It's about having the right investors around the table to help take that capital and make it into great businesses. Um, so the, the types of things that we invest in, mostly B2B, um, but that is pretty broad. So we go from sort of seed stage, where we incubate companies, um, and we do that in a sort of specific alley where we say, that if it's a big idea and there's a big enterprise customer like Toys R Us or Dunkin' Donuts or Jim Marie or Guitar Center, all of which we own, could be a customer for this, but it's gonna be hard to build, it's gonna take a lot of time and effort, then we'll put some money behind that company or behind that group of entrepreneurs and help them go build that business. We've got a few companies that have been very successful that have taken that model. We'll invest in companies that are Series A. So, uh, LinkedIn or SurveyMonkey are good examples of companies when they were starting to hit inflection points, starting to do well, and we invested at the Series A, Series B level. We also do growth investments, which are sort of 40, 50 million dollar investments of a company that's doing really well, that's hit the escape velocity and needs a little bit more money to continue that trajectory. Five minutes? Wrap up All right, so uh, we've got a big presence in New York. There's five of us here. We spend a lot of time in New York, long history here. Um, if anybody's doing anything in B2B enterprise, remember us. That's what I want you guys to take away. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Uh, Next to the mic. Uh, yeah, Taylor Green from Lara Ventures. Hey guys, I'm Taylor Green. I'm a principal at Vera Ventures. Uh, Vera Ventures is the most active early stage investor in New York City. So we focus on the seed stage, which basically means uh, there's likely a product built, uh, the product is in market or just about to launch. Uh, we have about $70 million in assets under management, uh, and our check size is between $250,000 and $500,000. Um, we're mostly focused here in New York, so that means that uh, about 70% of our portfolio is in New York, but uh, we are also pretty active on the West Coast as well. The firm's about three years old, and we've made about 170 uh, investments in that time. So we're currently investing out of our third fund, uh, which is $36 million, and we raised uh, in October of last year. So this is probably the most important uh, slide in the deck because the, the team is who, you know, as an entrepreneur, who you're gonna be working with uh, day in and day out. Um, so our team all has operating experience at the fund. So the firm was founded by Ken Lear, who founded the Huffington Post, uh, and is currently uh, also chairman of uh, Betaworks and BuzzFeed. Uh, and then Eric Hippo, who was the CEO of the Huffington Post, and before that, uh, CEO of uh, Zip Davis along with being an investor uh, at Soft, uh, Softech. 
then Ben Lear, who, uh, who founded and runs Thrillist and Jack Threads, and Jordan Cooper, who sold his last startup, Hyperpublic, to uh, Groupon last year and just started a new venture called Wildcard. And then you have myself and my team, we focus on deal flow and investments and, and mostly uh, portfolio support. But our philosophy really is that uh, operating experience is incredibly important uh, because we, we know what it's like to be in your shoes and um, have likely faced a lot of the challenges and opportunities that you're going to face throughout the life of your startup. So we try to use that to be helpful uh, where we can. So in terms of our investment focus, at the end of the day, we're really looking to invest in the best entrepreneurs and the best companies. Um, so. Typically, if you, if you break down our portfolio, we tend to be focused in a few different areas. Uh, that's consumer technologies, software as a service, and e-commerce, and, and a handful of others. But really, we're looking to invest in, in the best teams and the best, and the best people. This is the obligatory uh, portfolio slide of the great companies that we, uh, that we invest in, um, just to give you a flavor for some of the investments that we've made. And then, we spend a lot of time uh, and resources focused on uh, supporting the companies to help get, get you to the next inflection point. So we're really focused on the seed stage up to the A round. So that really comes in the form of recruiting. We spend a lot of time on customer acquisition and pricing strategies. So we're really gonna guide you in the earliest stages uh, until you get to that inflection point. That's really our specialty. So we'll spend a lot of time helping you uh, with that A round raise. So we're introducing you to companies, uh, to investors that we think would be a great fit for you uh, to, to, lead your, to lead your Series A. I think it's probably important to, to learn a little bit about what to expect when you come in to, to meet with us. So we take this process really seriously because uh, we want to be really respectful of your time. We've all raised money from VCs before and we know how they can drag along the process. We focus on being incredibly uh, efficient with with our time out of respect for, for you guys. So obviously the first step is to, to get in touch with us. So you can do that by emailing me, uh, taylor at leareventures.com. Uh, but usually the, the best way is to get a warm introduction from somebody that, that knows us. Uh, send along your pitch deck, obviously. And then uh, we'll do one 30 minute meeting uh, and then that's followed by uh, two partner meetings. So two of our partners need to um, need to approve an investment before we move forward. So this is all designed so that we can make really quick decisions really for, for the entrepreneurs. And then we'll always circle back even if, we, uh, even if we don't move forward with an investment. We think this is the most important uh, piece because you've taken the time to go through our process. We feel like we owe you a thoughtful response as to why we passed in case that's helpful to you as you want to change your, uh, your pitch or uh, business plan down the road as, as you continue to make, uh, as you continue to raise money. So I uh, hope that was helpful. You can uh, learn more here or feel free to reach out if you have any other questions. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, um, I, I think this is shaping up to be a pretty pitched battle um, among the firms. I don't know how others feel, but um, Catherine, you tell me if you've got any you know, any insight on how the voting's going to go, Jesse? It's going it's to be tight. It's going to be really close. I think it's going to be tight. I don't know. There's a clear winner right now. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We're not all winners here. <laughs> Somebody's got to lose. No, no. Well, it's going to be a number one. <laughs> Next Excellent. One. Excellent. It, it could be Angela Lee from 37 yeah. Angels. Yeah. Woo! 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 So um, I'm going to try to do this on a mic. Can you guys hear me? Yep. So I'm Angela Lee. I'm the founder of 37 Angels. So let's get the nuts and bolts out of the way first. We are all women investors investing in seed stage companies. Our check size is between fifty dollars and $150,000. And we have nine portfolio companies right now. But there's only one thing that I want you guys to remember about 37 Angels, and it is that our entrepreneurs love us. Um, if you go on our website, we have dozens of testimonials from entrepreneurs, three quarters of whom we did not fund. And the reason why they love us is, first of all, we are, we've been in your shoes. Half of our network was or is a current entrepreneur. The second thing is we're efficient. From pitch to funding decision, we guarantee five weeks or less, and we've met that every time. Um, and then the last thing is we really bring our network to bear for you guys. Um, once you get into a certain phase of the process, we open up our Rolodexes and we start introducing you guys 
to UX designers, to Ruby developers, to enterprise salespeople. I know those are in a lot of tough demand right now. And that is why our entrepreneurs love us, because we are efficient, we've been in your shoes, and because we bring our network to bear. And because we're entrepreneurially focused, you guys all came here to meet people. So in my remaining three minutes, I want you guys to stand up and introduce yourself to the person next to you and say hello. <laughs> That's totally there legit. will be questions at the end too, but I'm in favor of that. they better get prepared. I'm in favor of that. Um, that reminded me of some Catholic services of my youth. So peace be with you all. All right. Uh, the next is uh, Nikhil Kalgari from SoftBank. Hey everyone. Uh, I'm Nikhil, and uh, I'd like to tell you a little story. Um, most of these have been really boring. Uh, <laughs> all right. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. That's just like basically for money to anybody. Uh, so, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about about uh, family, uh, commitment, uh, and a venture capital firm called SoftBank. Um, so, we have been around a long time. Uh, you probably heard us in the news. Our let's see, uh, let's see, we've been pretty active. Had a billion and a half dollar acquisition of uh, Supercell this past week, the gaming company, and then another billion dollar one um, earlier this week. Uh, SoftBank Corporation is this giant Japanese telco. Um, they're one of our many LPs, or an independent venture capital fund here in New York, a little bit on the West Coast, um, and originally uh, in Boston. So um, we, are, we are really about commitment, and I can say that because we've been on the board of some pretty big companies for well past the length of our fund cycles, uh, which is really challenging to do because your LPs will say, get the fuck off the E-Trade board. Um, the fund's already closed. We're not going to make any more money off of it, but we stuck with the entrepreneurs through it. And the best example, which I hope, I hope will be a, a really good one because in, a, let's say, six months' time, I would love to say that we'll have the best, single best venture investment of all time. Um, and I hope you guys can figure out what company it is. But we, um, we put a pretty sizable check in 2001, a long time ago, into uh, a small Chinese startup. And uh, it's now uh, set to, hopefully IPO analysts say, uh, it will be somewhere between 80 to $120 billion when it uh, IPOs, which is, if you're counting compared to Facebook, is um, bigger two times at least, maybe three times what it did when it IPO. Um, and we own about 37% of it. So that was a really, really good investment. <laughs> and that's the kind of stuff that we want to invest in going forward. World changing, absolutely ridiculous returns, awesome entrepreneurs, anywhere, any background, um, but probably around New York or San Francisco. And, <laughs> just, just by the numbers, uh, and, and and that's that's the, the the things we're looking for. World changing, not your tiny little mobile food app that you might be working on. Throw it away, or don't come to us. Do it and don't come to us. There's plenty of small businesses that are wonderful and can impact the world positively, but we want the really big, game changing ones. Um, the funds start out first investments are Yahoo, uh, E-Trade, GSI Commerce, GeoCities. Um, more modern ones include companies like. Uh, Zynga, Guild Group, Credio, IPO in pretty soon. Um, a couple of ones that I saw they tried to steal some of my portfolio companies that were on the board, but they're not. Uh, <laughs> BuzzFeed, Buddy Media, a bunch of those are amazing companies. And by the way, we're um, SoftBank's an LP and a couple of those other funds, so it's all it's all friendly um, and very incestuous. So you know, keep your private matters to yourself. It goes. These guys talk a lot. Um, so. Uh, we're all entrepreneurs, every one of us. Um, we started a few companies, some of them with billions in revenue. The, month, the ones I started did not have billions in revenue, to be totally honest. But I'm uh, but, uh, happy to share that with you, because we're also accessible. That's something that's really important to us. 
uh, email us. Uh, I'm Nikhil at softbank.com. It's pretty easy. Uh, and I usually respond within 48 hours, sometimes a little bit slower. Uh, and uh, we look forward to building the next Alibaba with you. Thanks. <laughs> So, out of all these guys up here, uh, one of the things that makes you uh, pretty unique in the venture world is, uh, you know, one of your major LPs is a, is a publicly held, you yeah. know, very, and, and it's part of your name, right? It's not just like they're kind of yeah. maybe behind the scenes. How do you compare that to sort of, and, and you've worked with a number of venture capital firms with, in your current role and in your past startups. How do you kind of see it differentiating the way that your company works? You know, certain things are probably more private, right? But so that's that's the that's probably one of the best differentiating factors for us. That was a great layup. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Do it. So, uh, so SoftBank Corp, this giant, giant company in Asia, led by the Steve Jobs of Asia, um, and makes giant billion-dollar acquisitions twice a week at this point. Um, has over one thousand internet investments made over the course of its lifetime many of them household names. Um, I would not want any of our portfolio companies to expand to Asia. For early stage, we have an early stage fund and a growth stage fund. Early stage, it's too much effort. You're, you know, can't send your CEO to, to Asia to start a new office when you're two years into the business or less. Uh, but at the time of acquisitions, at the time of huge partnerships, for example, for our growth fund, if you're raising 50 or 100 million dollars, you probably are thinking international growth. If you're thinking international, hopefully you're thinking Asia when you come and meet with us. Um, so that's, those are two ways. Acquisitions is really, really important um, for all of us to, to make money. Uh, and, uh, and the other, other LPs are very helpful too. All of us have lots of LPs. Um, it's important when you meet with VCs, ask them two questions. Have you ever received a carry check? 75% of VCs have never received a carry check. Okay? And then ask them, who the hell are their LPs <laughs> are giving them money? <laughs> because sometimes the LPs are helpful, and sometimes they, uh, it, it's a signal that they may not have the next fund. So, uh, food for thought. Does that answer the question? Sure. Thanks very much. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, let's turn the heat up at night, thing. That was good. Uh, pulling back the curtain on the incestuous world of uh, venture capital. Good. Uh, next up from our eVentures is Tom Libero. Okay, thanks very much. So I'm Tom Libero uh, from RRE. You can reach me if you need to just at Tom, T O N, at RRE.com. Okay, and if everybody will check under their seats, I put one seed check, small seed check, <laughs> taped to the bottom of the seed. No, no, I'm just kidding. That's, that's how Larry ventures in this. <laughs> so, uh, well, two minutes or one minute. So, you know, my philosophy on investing is, you know, for your entrepreneurs out there, is it's a lot like picking a spouse. So, first off, I don't have any slides because you probably wouldn't and didn't woo your significant other with you know, 20 PowerPoint slides. If you did, we can talk after the break. Um, but seriously, it's, when you think about who you want to pick as a venture investor, I think you know, the resume is great, right? But equally important is fit and chemistry. Um, you really want to also, I think probably most importantly, spend time with that person who would be making your investment. Because I think you should spend time together before you go into a really long-term long committed relationship. So with that philosophy, I'm going to talk about two things. First, my firm, RRE, and then second, just a brief uh, bit about myself, and then take questions if there's time. So first on RRE, we've been in New York 19 years. So before it was cool, we were here. Um, we've been very active in building and supporting the New York ecosystem. We were a small firm, five general partners and two principals. We have uh, our most senior and oldest partner is Jim Robinson III, who was the CEO of a little company called American Express for 17 years. Jim also has a lot of other Fortune 500 experience. He's the lead director at another small company called Coca-Cola. Um, he's been on the boards of everything from uh, Bristol Myers Squibb to uh, General Motors. Our newest uh, colleague is Steve Schlafman, uh, who came over somehow from Lair Ventures. 
and um, we're investing out of our fifth fund. It's RRE Ventures Five. It's a two hundred and thirty million dollar fund. It's one of the larger funds in New York. And what does that really mean to you as an entrepreneur? I think there's two things there. Two hundred thirty million. Why is that important? That tells you we have a large enough fund that we can be flexible in funding you from inception straight through IPO. We'll write checks from 100K in a seed round, you know, two guys and a dog in a garage, um, straight through, uh, you know, a 10 or a $15 million Series C, uh, you know, which will set you up for an IPO. The Roman numeral in our fund, five, tells you we've been around a while, so we're probably doing something right, unless we have totally irrational LPs. And I think that's pretty important to look for uh, when you're considering a venture partner. Um, we've also, you, we're also a very active firm, both as investors, we take board seats, and in the community. Um, when you look at the community, such you know, bedrock foundations like Betaworks, where we were a lead investor, Techstars New York, we were a lead investor, the FinTech Innovation Lab, we were a lead investor, and the list goes on. So we've been in New York a long time, and I'd like to think we've had a, a hand crafting the scene that you see here in New York. When I first joined the New York Tech Meetup, there's about 15 people. Um, it's a lot larger than that today. The other things, uh, the other way we're active is helping our portfolio company. We have a large network within the Fortune 500 from Amex to AOL to UPS to uh, General Motors to Facebook, the list goes on. Um, one good example of us helping a portfolio company is a little company called Venmo. Um, it's also called Braintree. They were acquired by Braintree. We're an investor in each of them. When Venmo was first getting started, right, it's this like peer to peer uh, application to send money on your phone, they were shut down by First Data. And First Data said, hey, there's too much uh, uh, money laundering risk, so you're out of business. Fortunately, my colleague Jim had bought First Data for an $80 million uh, investment, later sold it for $33 billion. But he placed one phone call, and 24 hours later, Venmo was in, you know, was in business. So, we like to be very active. Sometimes it's just a phone call. Sometimes it takes years of work. Um, some of our portfolio companies you've probably heard of, especially the ones here in New York, BuzzFeed, OnDeck, SailThrough, BarkBox. Um, uh, we have investments in some other companies like Single Platform and Vine at the seed stage. So a pretty wide portfolio across enterprise and consumer. Um, you know. Flipping to just a little bit of a brief background on myself, because I think it's important to have a relationship, not just with the firm, but with the individual that would be investing. Um, I don't, to be honest, I don't focus on everything. We tend to be pretty focused on RRE. I tend to focus on the B2B side, whether that's FinTech, ad tech, uh, business software, and that's the background I come from. So um, if you're in one of those sectors, I'm happy to talk. If not, you know, it's probably something more for one of my colleagues. Um, and uh, I really appreciate everybody coming out. So if there's time for questions, I'll take one. If not, it's okay. Sure. I've got a question. So you didn't propose with a slide deck, but you are married, it looks like. So tell, how, how did you propose? <laughs> um, well, uh, let's see. I brought my wife to Italy, where my family's from. And I brought her to like this little hotel we were staying at. And I was so nervous that I couldn't get the ring box out of my pocket. And it became like really awkward because she thought I was like reaching down my pants or something like that. I had no idea what was going on. Um, but fortunately, I, I was able to get the ring out and we had, we had a, a wonderful time. Excellent. <laughs> um, you. Um, okay, next uh, from Bowery Capital, uh, we have Nick Pools. to get out my beautiful presentation, but I'd like to actually start with a little show of hands. How many people is an entrepreneur or you know, has worked in a startup at any point in their life or works with it? Okay, that's, that's actually a huge relief because I was told we were supposed to pitch entrepreneurs tonight and just not bore the crap out of them as fast as possible. So <laughs> I'm actually gonna try to talk to you guys, I'm gonna try to pitch you. I do have slides, but they're the most beautiful ones that we have, so. Find. Uh, 
questions in the panel so far. Thank you. I've <laughs> noticed a lot of Levi's in there. I had, I'd like to repeat that. I was told I have the best jeans in the panel so far. But I think that's, we add that as a criterion. Um, this has happened to me before. I mean, who uses USB stick? Honestly, I think you're wearing the best jeans as well. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Keynote file. Are we sure we can get this? Great menu. Anyone know how to play? founders are great. You guys are so helpful. <laughs> and this is why Barry Capital loves founders. Um, off the bat, you can tell we're really creative by that title that I changed right there. So I do have a couple slides. I'm going to try to go through them quick and focus on the ones that are really talking to you guys as founders. First, the obligatory face slide. We're a seed B2B fund. We're pretty new. Previously, we were the investment team for AOL Ventures founded in May when we closed and launched the fund. Um, we generally you know, invest in first institutional round, about 500K or so. And we focus on B2B, and we've got some beautiful faces. You can tell we love founders because everyone on the bottom, those are our venture partners, and three out of four of those were founders of AOL Ventures companies. On the top row, we've got everyone on the main investment team. So we're small, a lot smaller these days. Um, you know, I think I'll just go into this really quick because it's a beautiful logo slide. You know, this is really our thesis, our thesis around enterprise, is that startups are disrupting legacy players. That opportunity is obviously enormous. Everyone in this room knows that already. What I want to focus on is how to do that, the entrepreneur's point of view. We're seed investors, and what we've found is that as I'm sure you guys know as well, the key is getting that first big brand, or first couple of big brands. These days, that can be pre-A. In most cases, that's what we found. In our experience, talking to our AOL Ventures founders, our past founders, that is actually a major differentiator. That is actually the, the sign of traction, and that's what we're trying to help our founders do. When we started Bowery, we said, you know, VC value add, everyone talks about it, right? What actually has an impact? We doubled down on helping our founders with early customer acquisition. What does that mean? I mean, there's a range of things that we try to do. CXO summits, I know other firms do that. We bring in industry experts to talk about actionable, actionable things that our founders can do on a day-to-day -day basis building marketing sales teams, things like that. What I'd like to do here is actually focus on a new initiative. We think, you know, we're a small team. So we've got to focus on, you know, not just normal intros, but customer acquisition support that's actually scalable, something that's different. Over the course of the past six or eight months, we've actually been building software on our own. We found our AOL Ventures portfolio, those that did very well, when we were able to help them out, when we were able to make interest, connect them with big brands that really made a change. It had a huge impact, so we thought, how can we do more of that? We have a great network, or at least we feel we do, so what we've actually built out, in some ways, is, is an intranet. But it's not necessarily just focused on community or collaboration or everyone come in and you know, build your own beautiful face slide. It's actually focused on everything that's really important in a startup that we're both focused on, that hopefully you agree founders are focused on, which is successful sales and marketing. So the tool is actually designed to help you out as a founder through that entire funnel from building lead lists and prospecting, so we actually bring in a bunch of third party data help you actually build up that list and find really who's the right customer for you or get some more information about it, or at the very least have it in one place, all the way down to intros. 
we have a pretty big family between Bowery and AOL Ventures companies that we still support. I want to get into Xerox. Does another company have a deal there? Does Nick know them or does Mike know them? Can I request an intro? All that you can do automatically through this platform. Um, now we've spent six or eight months building this thing out. We feel that it's really going to make a difference, that it's really scalable, and that you know, for a small C team, it's an important factor. So anyway, um, you know, I want to thank you guys for coming out tonight, and uh, yeah. thanks for the art. My question for you is if you could talk a little bit about how many investments you all have made so far and tell us a bit more about them. Yeah, sure. So we've uh, we've invested in, in two companies, um, one of which recently announced M Particle, the other is Harm Labs. Um, you know, both are in the mobile uh, mobile sphere. One is uh, essentially a marketing management platform focused on uh, managing and engaging mobile app users for large brands. The other is uh, a little bit more on the back end, but it's focused around uh, customer level data data analysis. So I think you know both of those both of those guys are on our website along with more background on us. Um, and you know, I think uh, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Perfect. Yeah. All right. There's something else on there that was on your I think it was second slide or third slide around the President's Club at Bowery. And I'm really interested, yeah. uh, the Barry Cap presidents of that one. So I'm really interested, is, is this something that you feel, does this help your portfolio companies in, in a certain way that others aren't? And, and if so, can you explain it? Because you are you are B2B, so obviously many companies that fall in that space have things like the presidents. Club. But how does that work for your portfolio companies? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think we really, you know, like CX, like the CXO summits, it's something that other VCs have done, and I think what we're trying to do with these are focus them around, you know, I, I think the, so I guess to, to speak to the President's Club, we see that as an opportunity for, A, create some community and some, you know, visibility of Bowery, not just amongst the founders, but amongst the sales and marketing team. That's really important for us. Um, you know, we, we want them to kind of know who we are and what we're focused on. And, I think that also is, uh, I mean, really it's just it's a venue for the, the CEO or founder to um, accelerate performance on his team. Um, and also, I think, really, this is probably the focus at the end of the day, is getting getting all those top performers together in one place. You know, this is probably not going to be a like paid vacation to Aruba to begin with, but... You, you just wrote my second really, question. I was asking where you're going next. Ah, uh, well, <laughs> yeah. So I think Aruba maybe next year. Um, maybe we'll give out everyone free diesel jeans or you know, maybe training sessions on Adobe Acrobat for me. But you know, I think the President's Club is you get all the best performers in the room, and that could be best performance however the founder determines it. And you, know, you get those top guys in the same room sharing ideas. And um, you know, for us, that's, that's pretty critical. I mean, I, I think inside of Bowery speaks to this a little bit as well, which is that, you know, across across the portfolio, you know, for us, El Ventures and Bowery, you know, some of these guys back here have, have a ton of uh, ton of startups in their portfolio, and and as other VCs have, have tried to, you know, focus on, there, there's a lot of value that's not shared. There's a lot of value to be unlocked there, and so the extent to which we can get everyone, you know, operating together. Um, not necessarily from a hey, like can you please uh, write a post on my you know blog or whatever, but you know basically like can we actually share some actionable information that's going to help me you know, sell something, make a couple dollars? So that that's really what we think is important. What we found founders care about, and we hope that you know, these initiatives are going to be you know new things that are going to be helpful. Uh, in that vein. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. We have Brad Furluga from from IPix Capital. <coughs> Dare I tread into the end of the PowerPoint? Never mind. I do the right answer. Never mind. Um, 
Brett Sverluga, uh, founder and general partner at High Peaks Venture Partners. We are a, a seed and early A focused firm based in and very much biased towards New York City and the New York City landscape. Um, two general partners, myself. I'm a, a B2B SaaS and enterprise mobile focused investor and my partner, Ben Sun, who is a longtime consumer, consumer entrepreneur and focused on the e-commerce ecosystem. Um, and that's really all we do is those two things. Um, so what's different about us, <coughs> what's different about us is, is really how we contrast with, uh, I think, much of what's going on in the seed investing landscape right now, which I think is screwed up largely in both directions. And, and one level, you have seed investments being made by big firms who write tiny, insignificant checks that don't mean much to them, and they buy options, and they spend very little time with those companies, and many of those companies end up adrift and unsupported by their investors. At the under, other end of the spectrum, you have smaller funds that are seed-focused but make massive numbers of investments and end up unable to focus on and support those companies particularly well. We are and always have been very different by structure, starting first with an orientation towards the entrepreneur and behaving in a way where we have a small enough number of investments that we can commit in a material way to those, to those relationships with the founders and the CEOs. And we're now increasingly building operational support infrastructure to even further enhance our ability to improve outcomes and have an operational impact on the company. But, it starts for us first with building relationships where what we tend to be, if you talk to our entrepreneurs, is we have a way of becoming the first call for those guys and the most trusted and, and looked to partner. Excuse me for a second. Hello? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. This is one of our CEOs. Hold on a second. <laughs> Oh, Glenn. Yeah. Hey, Glenn's another one of our CEOs. <laughs> yeah. um, Just give me a minute, Glenn. Okay. Sure, yeah, you do that. Um, so I uh, am the founder of a, hand, uh, a company called Handshake. We're based here in New York. We're a B2B sales platform. Um, we raised our seed round about a year ago now. Um, Brad was part of that. Um, so I can't give you, I don't know, the history of high pieces of fund. I can't really tell you. I can't drop Coca-Cola or you know, Hasbro or any names like that to kind of blow you away or anything, but um, if you're a founder in the room, probably what you give a shit about is like what, you know, having high peaks as an investor actually feels like, um, which I can talk about. Um, so, uh, stuff that's different about them. Um, that small portfolio, not too many investments, actually care about each one and spend time with them thing, um, that is worth a lot to me. Um, I've I don't know, I don't really buy the whole, like we've got 300,000 companies, but we've got 300,000 partners, so it kind of nets out thing. I think that's kind of bullshit. Um, I think the smaller focus thing works out better. Um, uh, other things that have happened. Um, Hypix have started this thing called the Operating Partner Network, um, which is kind of a recognition that, um, I guess VCs are smart people, but most of the time are kind of making shit up because they don't really know everything about your company. Um, so what they um, what they have done there is they've basically said, hey, we're pretty smart, but we don't know everything. Um, so, but we do have networks of people who are senior executives in kind of key functional roles at either venture-backed or publicly traded companies. Um, so they've done things like putting together roundtables where myself and you know a few other founders will come in, talk about like a key problem we're having at the moment, and we'll kind of get you know torn apart or you know given advice, kind of Shark Tank style, which has been really helpful. Um, and we've managed to get kind of advisory board members out of that network. So we've got a senior vice president of sales from another New York company, um, who's now an advisory board member, is really helping us out. So. Um, the Operating Partner Network has been very impactful and is something that, as far as I'm aware, only high peaks are doing, at least in my group of investors. Um, what else? Uh, so hiring's hard. Um, the other thing high peaks is about to do is launch a uh, kind of an internal hiring function so that um, kind of for a really early stage company, like recruiter fees are kind of a bummer. Um, and, but if you're like me and I don't like, I'm 
if you haven't figured it out, I'm not from here. Um, I, don't, I don't really have like a massive network. Um, and having, so what Hypix are doing is like bringing an internal recruiter that they can share between kind of four or five companies um, and, and have someone who kind of really understands my company and me kind of out there maybe 20, 25% of the time looking for people for me, which is um, kind of a good balance between, you know, going to a recruiter who's got like a thousand clients and me going out to drinks every night and you know, getting dumped by my girlfriend. Um, so there's that. Um, uh, other stuff. Um, I will say that like one of the hardest challenges I'm facing right now is like finding a CTO for the company. I'm a founding engineer, but I got to find a, C a CTO. Um, my best intros came from the three guys that have most impressed me out of all of them. Um, all came to me through Ben's son, and they shat on everyone else that I talked to from any recruiter by a long way. Um, and the last thing I'll say is, uh, you know, as a CEO, like, you're supposed to kind of be crushing all the time. Like, anyone else, how are you doing? Like, I'm crushing. <laughs> but in the in about three months ago, I was kind of only ninety percent crushing one day. And, um, and Brad was the one guy who like kind of reached out to me and was like, "Hey, do you want to like get dinner? Like, you seem kind of you know you're not doing great right now." Um, and yeah, I think that like of all of my VCs, I think like Brad actually gives a shit about me as a person. Um, and you know, maybe that's not going to. Generate, generate an IPO, but I think that matters a lot. And if you're doing this for the first time like me, I think you should kind of consider the relationship and not just this wall of brands and all this other shit that, you know, people throw up here, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll field the question. <laughs> I have no questions. I have, I it, was a, it was a beautiful late spring day, and I said, let's go for a hike. Well, 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 well. Average check size. Average check size, average initial check size is about $400,000 right now, but we are, we're not life cycle investors, but we are aggressive reservers and committed to forming syndicates that, without breaking a sweat, can write the same check that we wrote in the first round again at least one more time because we know that plans are almost always missed at least a little bit and toes frequently get stubbed and Ben and I have been doing this for a long time and, and the one and done model in, of seed investing doesn't work. Great. Thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, got a birthday girl. Mm -hmm. No. no yeah. All right. Bad thing you tech from Comcast. I'm sorry. A birthday investor. People are kind of nervous that I'm even here now. And the first thing I said to David is, is this videotaped? Because if it is, I probably should withdraw right now. <laughs> um, but so, and it, where, where's my, do I have my slide? I, I have one slide, it's a picture. Maybe it'll come up, maybe it won't. If it won't, um, Can't no. miss it. No, I'm, I'm like, if I, if I look hard enough, um, I have to do it myself. <laughs> 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 I said, I was just oh, these are VCs helping VCs. I was like, I don't know how to use a computer. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I don't know how to use a computer. So, so Frank lied. It's, it's not my birthday. A lot of VCs will lie to you. I'll always tell you the truth. Um, but no, no, Frankel's a great guy. A lot of these, I mean, these guys are my friends. Downloads? I see them a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, I wonder what picture he will put up. Brian, will you like me? We'll see what goes next. Uh, For the right. Uh, Snapchat pictures? No, uh, there we go. All right, so I know if you guys remember this from back in the day, and, and I'm probably, maybe I'm aging myself, maybe I'm not, but remember this magic eye that you used to have, like, that poster? And you'd have to, and, and I kept looking, and I'm, thank you.
I just want to know what karaoke song you choose. Okay. Oh. I will survive. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Eric. Right. So, so my favorite. So, oh, sorry. Um, so then, this is probably my favorite one, as, as if you see that that we actually take because people hear it so. Um, I guess not that often, but just say yes from Snow Patrol. Let's hear it. Can you give us? I, I can't. We, we need it. a background. <laughs> and wait, wait. Have you heard me speak? Do you really want to hear me sing? Can you, right, can you get some music on there? Is that? <laughs> Thank you. Definitely, thank you. Okay, so our final uh, presentation is Ellie Wheeler from Greycroft. All right, last but not least, I'll keep it short and that should help me. I also don't have any slides, which is good because apparently it takes three or four VCs to actually get them more. I will, uh, I'll start off a little differently because it's how I would expect you to start off, which is introducing yourself. Um, so I'm Ellie Wheeler at Greycroft, been there a little over two years. Um, I've been in various investing roles, East Coast, West Coast, a little bit of time in London at different stages for the last 10 years. Um, most recently, I guess before Greycroft, I was working with uh, Chris Sacka, who's an angel investor out on the West Coast while I was in business school. Uh, prior to that, I was at Cisco doing corporate development, and there that means M&A, venture, and strategy. And I was focused on the enterprise software side, so that was mobility, collaboration, video conferencing. Um, and I started off my career by dropping out of medical school and then going to a private equity firm because that's a normal path to get into venture. Um, so now at Greycroft, we were started in 2006 um, by Alan Pashakoff, who uh, was a, one of the veterans of venture capital and previously had started Apex Partners, which is now one of the biggest uh, private equity funds in the world. And uh, he wanted to get back to, back to basics and back to where he started into venture. Uh, so started a $75 million fund in 06. We've got offices in New York and LA and have from the beginning. And the fund was uh, you know, kind of centered around a, a few observations that we saw in the market at that time, which were basically that companies were getting funded based on a VC funds, fund size, as opposed to what the appropriate capitalization was for the company. So you had these big venture funds that needed to put at least $5 million to work and own at least 25% of the company in order to make their math work, which wasn't necessarily what the best thing for the company was. So there's a few things that have kind of shaped our thinking from the beginning. Um, there's four of them, one of which is that we don't have a minimum ownership percentage. Tied closely to that is that we don't have a minimum investment amount. So we're never gonna say to you, we need, five mil we need to put $5 million into this deal and we need to own 20% of your company. We want to be in the best companies, not just the ones you can get 25% of. Um, our, we spend 95% of our time on Series A. Uh, we do a small amount of seed, but we really focus on Series A. Um, so that's going to be anywhere between $500,000 up to $5 million, but we've never written a $5 million check. Our average is one and a half to two. We also don't necessarily take board seats. We'll always have a formal board observer role, um, but you know, we, your VCs are going to show up anyway. You know, sometimes you can use that board seat to get an outsider in who's going to add a tremendous amount of value and you're still going to have your VC there. So we'll help you do that. But also, we always syndicate. So there's always another fund in the room with us. Um, and we think those four things make it so that the entrepreneur can put the best round together and get the best people around the table. But it also allows us to be pretty complimentary to a lot of others who might need things that we don't. Uh, we focus very broadly on digital media, which is one of those terms that no longer really means anything. So we've got a few buckets where we spend a lot of time. So that's content kind of up and down the stack. So that's B2C content all the way down through enabling technologies and platforms. Same goes in commerce. So from, and by commerce, I really mean anything that's enabling a transaction. So that's B2C, that's all the way, that's you know, enabling technologies, retargeting solutions, all the way through loyalty and payments. And uh, we also do a lot of SaaS. So that will be marketing, so selling to the CMO, um, we spend a lot of time there, and also kind of retail tech. And we also do a, a fair amount of ad tech. I think in New York and LA, it makes a lot of sense. Um, that, I think I'm gonna wrap. Thanks everyone for coming. So you mentioned you always syndicate. Does that mean the other venture partner usually takes a board seat? Not necessarily, because we take board seats when we're asked. Um, but sometimes that other venture partner, it's a prerequisite that they have a board seat. That's fine with us. And you don't want, there's diminishing returns having VCs on your board. You don't want three of us. 
So one of the things you brought up is uh, being founded by uh, Alan Patrickoff, and I'm really curious about how does I imagine that his kind of history in the capital world brings brings a certain a sort of ideology to the fund, right? And you mentioned sort of you specifically don't take a minimum percentage or anything like that. Um, are there any other insights that your fund kind of brings to the table where you're like, okay, we've seen the VC world change over the years, and is there anything you can share with the crowd around that? Yeah, that's, that's interesting you mentioned that. I mean, that's a lot of stuff that we talk about internally all the time, right? Because there's... That's what I'm asking here. Yeah. It's no. fine. Nobody's listening. No, no, no. It's fine. It, it's just, you know, when people inside the fund have seen every cycle and every time something crazy's happened, um, you know, it, it, there's a constant voice of reason around the table, which probably means that when valuations get really high, like we think they are right now, we're, you know, it, it's been... It's been tough. Our valuations have been really high, and you know, it's we have a tempering force at the table, for sure. Cool. Great. Well, thank you. Thanks. Well, thank you. And, and if we could, if we could get a hand for all of you, see. I'm glad hearing that uh, some of our uh, folks over there, we probably have a couple minutes for a couple of questions, although I know we kind of ran over, so I hope uh, we're not trying to get patience. But if anybody wants to give a shout out. Um, all right, if not, uh, did, I, I have one question I'd love for them to share. A couple of people did, but it's something I think a lot of entrepreneurs need to know. Could everybody share out of the VC crowd over there um, their time to make a decision? Just like less than 10 words, like no big spiel or anything. Like, is it a week, five weeks, five months, five years? Do you have go ahead, Never every step out? Never? Five <laughs> weeks. It, uh, so, I, three weeks if it's a seed stage fund, probably six weeks if it's a series A in life. Probably answer for everyone. Every single person up here has uh, not responded, so infinite amount of time until some point. Um, and there's definitely been somewhere in the first meeting, it was like, this is not a fit, don't waste your time talking to me. It's not worth it for you. So it really fills the gamut. But hopefully, um, you know, you, you make a target. <laughs> as soon as possible. If you're, if you're doing it, if you're doing the deal. If you're, if you're not doing the deal, hopefully you say no. Yeah, you yeah, actually say like, no. Right yeah. There, so yeah, yeah. I, I've invested $5 million in a company within one week of meeting the CEO for the first time. I thought that was really, really fast. Don't have, doesn't happen all the time. Uh, probably. I'm on. Cool. Hey, Jesse. So one thing I'd add, too, is, uh, you know, two meetings in a week is probably as fast as we've ever done, but we're in a, in a deal with Nikhil where we said no relatively quickly. Then we said no again, and then nine months after the first meeting, after what had been a long process of the entrepreneur keeping coming back, we did the deal, and I think we would both call it one of the most exciting young companies in our portfolio now. So it cool. take a lot of forms. Cool. I'm, I'm good if everybody's going to go with that. Yeah, uh, we've got one back here. Uh, yes, I have a question for Nikhil. You mentioned a $100 million investment. So what type of equity position are you uh, yep. considering when we're dealing sure. with that scale? Uh, yes, uh, to repeat the question, $100 million investment, what kind of equity stake do you expect to get for that? Uh, so that was a $100 million round. Uh, that's for the growth stage. We have two funds, and they take very different flavors. Early stage fund. Uh, we do 500k to five million dollar size checks in you know the traditional you know 10 to 20 percent kind of equity shares what everyone kind of wants, and then the growth stage fund does 10 to 50 million size checks, um, and you know of the same equity size. We don't have a requirement to have 30 percent or 20 percent uh, ownership in a company, um, like as you'll discover if you don't know already that top five sized funds usually want to have minimum 20% ownership in a company. Meaning their check size doesn't determine the valuation. Um, okay, well that's great. I mean, we, we would love to spend a lot more time, I think, asking questions and hopefully people get a chance to, to speak a little more on the way out. So we're very fortunate tonight. If you see these uh, bags up here, we have some wine, I think, uh, Regina, from Silicon Valley Bank. Uh, Silicon Valley Bank is the uh, commercial bank uh, for startups and technology companies. Uh, started, not surprisingly, in Silicon Valley. Uh, Regina uh, is- I carried the wine over. Somebody help me. Yeah. Help me carry the wine over. Has thankfully sponsored yes. the, the, the prizes for our winners. And I think we're gonna have two winners 
You tell me. I think it's 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 best and then most congenial or. It's up to the judges. Yeah, up yeah. to the judges. So. Oh, well then, I'm thinking of a number between. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, are, would you like us to give these to the VCs, or you should you should choose uh, two VCs? <laughs> okay, uh, that you would like to acknowledge for their fine performance. Although I know we've had nothing but fine performances tonight, <laughs> and you can specify any criteria that you like. Okay, well, I mean, personally, I'd like to give one of these to the person who called out another VC first. I feel like that was that was one of our things we wanted, and I felt like it was really good. So, I think I believe that was Nikhil, correct? Who really, really that was my guess. Yes. The night in. Nikhil, get on up here. This is I like one of you. I promised myself I wouldn't cry. For mine, I've got. Uh, I'm going to be very rule pushing and either give away both bottles, including mine, which is okay, or see if there's another bottle that can be procured. Uh, I'm gonna give mine away for most creative and innovative use of the time spot, and I've got two winners. Um, Brad, I thought that was awesome, bringing up your entrepreneurship. A total coincidence, really just great timing. Um, and then Angela for the networking and letting us meet. Well deserved, uh, and thank you, thank you, Jesse, and thank you, Catherine. Wonderful job, uh, and thank you to all of our panelists, uh, and thank you for all of you for attending again. As I noted, tomorrow M and A and IPOs around lunchtime, and then the following evening, uh, big data and fashion. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you.